The data with ibrutinib in the frontline setting is limited to a couple of uh, studies. I think the one with the longer term follow-up is, is the study that we did at Dana-Farber uh, in collaboration with the colleagues at, with, at NGH. In that study, we actually put 30 patients on ibrutinib, uh, 420 milligrams once a day, all the way to uh, progression or an acceptable toxicity. And uh, we did see an overall response rate of 100%, which is an amazing thing to achieve. But not only that, we, see, we saw a very good partial response, about 30%, which is very exciting too. Uh, similar to prior experiences in relapse patients, um, the therapy, the responses to the therapy was affected by CXR4 mutations. And when we think about the depth of the response, um, it, the very good partial response for VGPR was lower in patients with CXR4 mutations at 14% versus 44% in patients without CXR4 mutations. And also uh, the duration of the follow-up was about four years. So the four-year progression of free survival was about 76%, which is an amazing outcome for patients with Waldstrom's. But when we looked at the uh, patients with CXR4 mutations, those patients had a four-year progression of free survival rate of about 59%, compared to about 82% in patients without CXR4 mutations. So that really gives us an additional, uh, additional data you know, in terms of how CXR4 mutations impact the outcomes of patients uh, to, you know, treated with ibrutinib. Now, um, the side effect profile was very you know, manageable and nothing out of the ordinary, nothing out of the expected, some minor cytopenia, some arrhythmias, uh, very manageable so far. So I think uh, the study adds to the prior existing data uh, showing that ibrutinib monotherapy alone uh, is essentially a highly effective rapid effects, rapid responses, durable responses, and in my opinion, it's one of the most active agents in patients with Waldenstrom's that we have today.